Hi, it's Kevin Halsey here, owner of Sunstream Infrared Saunas. And in this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of the many different heaters that are used in the infrared sauna industry. Have you been looking around at the different infrared sauna websites and getting overwhelmed by all the technical and often contradicting information on the sauna sites? I've worked with infrared sauna since 1999 and our company is one of North America's original infrared sauna distributors. Well, I receive hundreds of inquiries from customers that are confused by all the information in the marketplace and particularly regarding the many different heater types used in the infrared saunas. Which type of heater is best? Every company selling their saunas is insisting their heater is the best and how can that be? Many people who have contacted me are frustrated by the confusing sauna advertising and their heads are absolutely spinning. With 17 years experience working with the saunas, I've worked with most of the different heaters that are used in infrared saunas and I've been witness to the development of the various technologies through the years. I may not be able to sort out all of the confusion regarding these heaters in one video, but I hope this overview will be a good start for you. So let's get into it. Starting over here on my right, this is chronological. First heater here is a ceramic tube type heater. Now infrared sauna started up in Japan and Korea and probably probably the original heater used in infrared saunas was this black uh, ceramic tube it's mounted in a metal housing with a reflector behind it some of these tubes had different minerals inside of them again here's another example of a ceramic tube heater this one is white so these came from japan and korea primarily and the infrared sauna industry has largely moved to China as well. The North American European version of the ceramic element type heaters are these little guys here, which is a solid ceramic concave shape heater. Uh, we have electrical wiring winding around inside of here. This is formed in a mold, solid ceramic. They come in a few different uh, colors and different sizes. This one is slightly larger. This is the most common size here. Uh, here we see a single ceramic element mounted in the metal housing, again with a little reflector behind it. Some companies will mount uh, two of them together in a housing. So this comprises the ceramic element category and these are really the the older technology a couple comments regarding them they're very hot on the surface surface temperatures are ranging between 400 and 900 degrees they can be quite uncomfortable if you get close to them it can be almost impossible to sit directly in front of these heaters um, they provide only a spot heating effect in the sauna I worked with these heaters for eight years, 1999 through 2008, and I certainly used the saunas for dozens or hundreds of hours using these ceramic element heaters. Uh, of course, they get people sweating, but the sensation in the sauna is not ideal. Because of their small size, if you think of the size of your body in comparison to the size of these small elements, they're simply not able to provide a really widespread projection beam of the radiant infrared heat to cover your body in a nice, gentle, even manner. Um, that's the main drawback of the ceramic elements. I'll also mention that in all of my testing, the ceramic elements always test quite high in EMFs. We could say mid to high. Certainly whenever I get my gauss meter close to these heaters, uh, it's jumping off the scale with, with EMF. Now moving along chronologically, we'll come over to the other side of the table. We have a group of the carbon panel type heaters. And these were introduced largely to overcome the shortcomings of the ceramic elements. The carbon panels are thin, and it's a thin layer of carbon. 
inside of the panel. Because the layer of carbon is so thin, it heats up very quickly. These are microscopic particles of carbon. They heat up quickly. It's very energy efficient just in converting the electricity to radiant heat. Uh, different manufacturers make them in different sizes for different positions in the saunas. This is a tall, narrow one, obviously. You know, here's a, here's a very small one. And often people ask me, well, how many heaters are in your saunas? You can't really compare different infrared saunas based on the number of uh, heaters. As you can see, different manufacturers, and these heaters do come from a variety of manufacturers. Uh, different manufacturers produce the heaters in different sizes and different wattages. In our Sunstream saunas, we tend to use much larger heaters than most. We're one of the few companies that's capable of producing the heaters in a large size. You can see this heater here mounted on the door of our Evolve sauna. Um, so we have a fewer number of heaters, but uh, our sauna may well be uh, significantly more powerful than a heater, than a sauna with a greater number of heaters that may be using, you know, smaller heaters. That's very common as a matter of fact. Moving along, this is a very common size, a tall, narrow heater. And you'll often see these mounted on the walls of saunas like so. That's not the best design. When they're tall, narrow like this, you actually can have a fair bit of the heater up above your head. And this is really a waste of our available power. You don't need the infrared flying up above your head. As you can see in our Sunstream designs, our heaters are lower on the walls. This is very intentional. We want to make the best use of the power. We have the heaters lower and we're trying to focus the infrared heat on your body where it's needed. This is an example of our Sunstream heater. This is the size that we use on the back wall of many of our sauna models. Uh, you'll notice as I hold it, it doesn't bend all that much. Uh, we build our heaters 1.2 millimeters thick. They're very stiff, rigid, strong. This is our ultra low EMF heater. We introduced the EMF cancelling technology about seven years ago. And you'll notice that it's got a very nice finish on it. That leads me to my next example. which is really an example of something you don't want. You'll notice when I pick this guy up how, how much it flexes. This is a cheaper heater. Uh, it's much thinner. And I'd like to point out this cloth covering that's on the heater. It's actually glued right onto the panel with very strong adhesive. Um, as far as I can understand, some of the manufacturers are putting these synthetic cloth covers on the heaters for aesthetic reasons. They, they don't have a nice finished panel. They're trying to hide it. However, these cloth uh, covers really cut the heat back and very suspect for uh, containing chemical flame retardants as well. Plus the strong adhesive holding it onto the heater. So there's a lot of extra synthetics going into the sauna when you have these cloth covers. So far, looking at the two categories, the original ceramic elements and the uh, newer carbon panel type heaters here, these are both examples of far infrared heaters. And the vast majority of infrared saunas on the marketplace are emitting far infrared. Far infrared being uh, longer wavelengths that are absorbed very safely by the water content in our skin. The heat is then drawn in deeper through conduction into our joints and our muscles, etc. But the initial penetration is into the water in our skin. That's, um, that's the nature of far infrared produced by the ceramic elements and the carbon panels. We do have a new breed of sauna in the marketplace, <coughs> so-called full spectrum saunas. 
and I get a lot of inquiries asking us if our saunas are full spectrum. We have a few brands in the marketplace that are adding uh, different near infrared emitting devices to their far infrared saunas. Now near infrared are shorter wavelengths that are deeper penetrating into our tissue and I'll talk a little bit about all the research that's behind near infrared. It certainly does have a therapeutic application but what some sauna companies are doing is installing either a panel of LEDs this is a panel of LEDs that emits near infrared, the shorter wavelengths. And some sauna companies are mounting these on the wall of their far infrared sauna, which would consist of the carbon panel heaters. So a combination of the far infrared carbon panel, along with a small panel of LEDs emitting near infrared, and the sauna is being termed full spectrum. Uh, really just a marketing term that certainly doesn't have any scientific definition the term full spectrum uh, another example of a so-called full spectrum sauna includes the carbon panel heaters again with the addition of some quartz halogen tubes so this is a glass tube that contains uh, halogen gas and these emit near infrared as well so we see some saunas combining these with the carbon panels. Now let's talk a little bit more about the nature of near infrared because there is a tremendous amount of research behind the therapeutic use of near infrared. As I mentioned, it is deeper penetrating into our tissues. There's been a lot of research done by NASA. Um, this device here is called the Warp 10. It was developed by a company called Quantum Devices that was contracted by NASA to develop a special LED, uh, very strong. Now this LED is emitting both red light and near infrared, invisible near infrared light. Uh, these two are very close on the light spectrum. They're just a fraction of a micron apart. And a lot of the research along these lines has used either red light or near infrared. Um, they produce similar benefits. So we can, we can certainly group them together here for simplicity's sake. This is a very strong uh, LED that produces a high energy output of, of the red and near infrared light. And in all the studies, it was uh, determined that the device must be applied pretty much directly to your skin, either in close proximity to your skin or directly onto your tissue. And this is to overcome our skin's natural defense mechanism to reflect most near infrared. Because the near infrared is deeper penetrating, our, our bodies have evolved to actually reflect most near infrared energy. And again, all the studies have determined it's been necessary to have a very high energy output applied directly to your skin to overcome our defense mechanism and achieve the penetration and produce the, the therapeutic benefits such as wound healing, anti-inflammation. There's been a lot of studies done with neuropathy, uh, folks with diabetes. Another example of a near-infrared device is this small pad. This is from a company called Healthlight. And we have different rows of LEDs here some emitting near, invisible near-infrared light, some emitting the visible red light. Again, this is a device that would be applied directly to your skin in order to achieve the necessary penetration and the benefits that are uh, desired. Now, I should also mention that with the use of near-infrared, because of its deeper penetration, uh, if the device is to be used anywhere near your face, most of the studies have folks using protective eyewear. So if the device is on your throat, perhaps, um, you know, these special goggles will filter out the, the red and near infrared to protect your eyes.
And that now leads us to our last category. We've, we've sort of covered the far infrared saunas with the carbon panels and the ceramic elements. We've touched upon the so-called full spectrum saunas with near infrared devices mounted on the walls. We have another group in the broader realm of infrared saunas, so-called near infrared saunas. Uh, in this case, there, there's a group you know, amongst the, the wider community of infrared sauna enthusiasts, a group of folks who are building saunas using the simple heat lamps. So this is a Sylvania 250 watt heat lamp. These are in the hardware stores. I saw them on Amazon today. They're nine dollars. Um, again, we have a group of folks who are building small enclosures and in mount, mounting a few of these just on the wall uh, to produce a so-called near-infrared sauna. Looking at the technical data on these bulbs, the amount of near-infrared energy that's produced by these inexpensive heat lamps is just a mere fraction of what is produced by our specialized devices developed for NASA, for instance. You know, here we have a thousand dollar device and the larger device used in a lot of the studies was a seven thousand dollar device. Uh, you know, these are the, this is the kind of equipment that produced the uh, therapeutic benefits in all the studies. However, we do have a, a, a group of enthusiasts that are suggesting, often referencing all the studies on near infrared and suggesting that the same therapeutic benefits can be uh, achieved through the use of these inexpensive heat lamps. Again, looking at the technical specs, the, the near infrared energy that comes from these heat lamps is a mere fraction of that that we have from our specialized equipment here. Well, we've covered a lot of ground and I hope I've uh, helped sort things out regarding the different heaters and infrared saunas. Perhaps it's become even a little bit more confusing having tried to cover so many in one video. I certainly invite anyone to contact me anytime. You can get me at the telephone number below or have a look at our website, which is sunstreamsaunas.com. I certainly encourage you to have a look at our beautiful Evolve saunas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video. Bye now.